Welcome. How are you doing today? George Headley here. We're going to start on our owners and presidents' roles and responsibilities to build a great construction business. It's one of our webinars we do on a monthly basis. Uh, sometimes we miss a month, but uh, thanks for being here today. Uh, make sure you all have got a handout. I sent you all a handout. If you didn't get one, email me and I'll send you one later after the program. Uh, GH at hardhatpresentations.com or hardhatbizcoach.com. So anyway, today we're going to spend an hour or more covering the roles and responsibilities. Uh, as usual, I've got way more content than I have time for, so I'm going to rush through it. And then as we get going, if you got a question or a comment, uh, send me a chat. And then I'll, I'll see that pop up on my screen and I can stop. I'll stop in the middle, we'll take some questions, and then I'll continue to move forward. All right. So you got your handout. Uh, hopefully uh, you, you got it printed out. You can follow along. We're going to start on page three of the handout and uh, just uh, let you know what's going on. All right. So many of you know me. Most of you know me. My name is George Headley. I started my construction company in 1977, built a nice large construction company with 150 employees, building mostly commercial, industrial, retail stores, Walmarts, Kmarts, uh, and lots of office and industrial warehouse buildings throughout Southern California and Las Vegas. And I went to the University of Southern California, graduated in the top 100% of my class, and I'm uh, proud of that. So anyway, today we're going to talk about how to help your business. I started coaching clients after speaking over 20 years at the World of Concrete, literally every year, did 28 years in a row, uh, 23, I, I lose track, and um, built a lot of clients, got, uh, gained a lot of clients, and then I started a coaching business. So today I spend almost 100% of my time on coaching and consulting companies, how to move to the next level, grow, profit, organize, systemize, all those kinds of things. Obviously, if I can help you, give me a call. And uh, then I've started some, I've got peer groups, I've got an online school, and I do some uh, workshops. So glad you're here today. I wrote a book, Get Your Construction Business to Always Make a Profit. You can get it on Amazon if you're interested. So today, we're talking about you as an owner or a president or general manager. How do you become an owner instead of the worker? And that's the main thing that we want to talk about. Everybody tends to want to do the work, not trust, not delegate, not let go. And because of that, your business gets stuck at the level of what you can do and what you can control. So we're going to talk about that today in a big way. So let's start on page three of the workbook handout and uh, get it going to the next level. So why are we here today? Why are you here? Hopefully you're, you're here to learn how to take your company to the next level, uh, let go, maybe hire, maybe delegate, maybe focus on what you need to focus on. What I notice is most contractors I work with, I have about 60 clients in my peer groups and another 20 or so active clients that I coach on a regular basis and then another 100 or so that call me when they need help. They were my past clients, we fixed them and now they're on retainer. So so I, I, get, I get a lot of input and I hear a lot of comments from mostly owners and managers and the, the main problem is they want to go out and get more business. They want to go out and hire. They just don't have any time. Well, why don't you have any time? Because you don't have a team to handle the capacity of your business. So that's really what I want you to think about. Get in work and build capacity. That's the key here for what presidents and owners and managers. So I'm going to say owner. I'm going to probably say manager. I'm going to probably say president. They're all interchangeable. Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Coke. We're all going to talk about soda. So I'm going to say, I'll probably say owner, president, manager. It doesn't matter. It's the man or woman in charge of the business who probably owns it and, and runs it. I have a lot of clients and most of them still are there every day running the business up to 150 million. Some of my clients, they're still there. And they might have a general manager, they might have a president, but they're still there running the business, organizing the leader in the business. So are you uh, constantly working too much? Uh, you don't have time to improve. You know, you barely made it to today's workshop, webinar. You're not getting the results you want. You feel like you're running in place. Uh, you're over budget on your jobs. You bid it at 25% and you make 20 or 10% and you make six. Uh, and, and so what we're going to talk about today is what you can do as a president owner of your company 
to free yourself from the day-to-day -day activities and build a company that works with or without you being there every hour so you can go out and focus on the priorities that you want to maintain. A lot of my clients are trying to develop some real estate. They just don't have time. Well, you're not going to build your future if you don't have time to invest in your future. So when you invest your time, you're going to need somebody in your office to fill in where you're not being there as much, and you're going to need to learn how to delegate. So, so if I look at the winning coaches like Andy Reid, Super Bowl champ, um, what do they got? He can't call the same plays on this every time. He, he's got to put in different players. He's got to upgrade his player roster every year. He's got to change his coaching staff every once in a while. He's got to do a lot of things to stay ahead. But he's not out on the field. He's not even calling the plays. The guy on the, on the right there is probably calling the plays. So he's approving them. But how do we get to the next level? How do I stop calling the plays? How do I stop running the plays? And so what about you? You're the head coach of your team. Are you spending too much time in the field? Are you scheduling crews? Are you still worried about you know, pricing jobs, estimating, managing change orders. Uh, what do you do? So we need some plays. What plays are you willing to call? I just had a, a potential client call, uh, call me last week. We had a really good conversation. He, that guy is stuck. He, he just is stuck at the same level. He's actually shrunk a little, even during inflation, because he just won't do what he needs to do. And so I bugged him today. Hey, you ready to start your program? And he goes, well, I'm still waiting for for so, for something to happen. I sent him an email back. Will you keep waiting? I'm still here. And I guarantee he's going to be in the same place because he's not willing to make a decision, a tough decision to change his business model, to change his role and, and delegate some of his responsibilities to other people. So that's what I want you to think about. What bold plays do I have to call to win more games, make more money and move your business to a higher level? So what do you need? Strategies, plays, work charts, job description, new customers, better estimating, better software. What do you need to help you run your business? And so true or false, I'm maxed out, overworked, and I'm holding my business back from reaching its potential. So true or false, do so you have more than five or six people that report to you or do you make decisions for them? Are you responsible for everyone's work, results, performance, deadlines, activity? Constantly remind them. Do people keep calling you all day to make decisions for them and so you can tell them what to do? Uh, do you have a lot of fire drills? You feel like you're on fire every day? Do you have too many responsibilities? You don't have enough time to get everything done? you have trouble getting home, see your kid's soccer game or go to their baseball game or take a vacation? And your customers call you on most important issues. And you never have time to meet with your, your direct reports and hold them accountable. And no wonder they're, no, they're not accountable. And you never have any training time. And uh, I just can't hold my people accountable. It's hard. And I don't have a management team that I can delegate to. And I need to be there almost full time. Otherwise, we're going nowhere fast. True or false? Well, if you got a lot of truths, you're in the right place today. My business won't work without me. And I want my business to work for me. And I don't want to work for my business. I want to lead and manage and have a visionary leadership for my business. So when you're stuck, here's your, if you just keep digging your own path, tightening the noose, you keep getting in trouble. You don't get where you want to go. You're stuck. Uh, and so does your business work without you? And so are you the CEO or the president or the vice president or the manager or the system manager or the worker? Are you doing too much work? And so you know what a C CEO is? That's you. You're the chief everything officer. Everything revolves around you. You make all the decisions. You oversee. You make sure people are doing their job. All those kinds of things versus leading and managing and getting more work and building talent and training talent and mentoring talent and generating loyal customers, uh, generating negotiated contracts. No, you're too busy working to make any money. So I looked up uh, entrepreneur, and which I, I call biz builder, business builder. The definition of a business builder is a person who takes financial risk, financial risk, keyword, starting, organizing, managing a business in expectations to grow, 
increasing profits. So that's growth and increasing profits. You can't keep making the same profits and have them be increasing. I want the margins to get higher and higher with better customers. And so what are you doing about it? So, so the key is I got to take risk. I got to have a vision, a written vision of what I want my business to do. Uh, I want, I've got to have a, a clear vision with clear core values of where do we want to be in one, two, five years? Where do I want to be? What do I want to be different? What do I want to be the best at? What should our focus be where we make the most money, have the most potential to grow? And then I've got to, I got to stop doing what I always do and expect different results. I've got to continually get unstuck, move to the next level, disrupt the status quo, all those kinds of things so I can scale up and get to the higher level. So I've got to grow and move to a higher level. And, I, and some of the things I've got to do, I've got to hire, I've got to let go and delegate while I need more people. And i got to pay more. i got to get over the fact everything's so expensive right now. It's time or money, right? And so i got to seek better customers, higher margins, better jobs, people and customers who need us on a more regular basis. I got to have an accountable, responsible management team to run my business who are going to basically take care of the operations, accounting, estimating. I'm still the leader. I'm still there. I'm still watching them, but they do most of the work. I just oversee it and maybe approve a few things. Uh, and then I need to get organized and systemized. And I got to have an org structure with a clear chain of command. I can't everybody have them call me all the time. And, according, and, and the purpose for my business is to build wealth. Well, if I'm not making any money, I won't have any cash to invest in wealth building, building opportunities. It might be a rental company, a gravel pit, might be a, some real estate. It might be an equipment rental company, whatever it might be. I've got to have something that's ongoing for my future and retirement. And of course, that will allow me to enjoy the benefits of a business that works for me rather than me working for the business so I can make my house payment, my truck payment. Hey, by the way, how many of you have a life, a goal of lifetime car payments, truck payments? Yeah. Well, that's not what I want. I want to live the good life, get out of debt. So what's your vision? Where do you want to be in a few years? Uh, most contractors can't retire and they can't sell their business because not making enough profit and, and nobody wants to buy a job, right? So if you were going to, uh, so are you a business builder? Are you an entrepreneur? So if you were going to buy a construction company, what would you want to know about it? Well, the, you know, I want to know the money. I'd want to know their customers. If they got any repeat customers, do they know their numbers? Do they, if they bid a job at 20%, they actually make 20%. You know, are they organized and systemized? Who are their key people? Yeah, all that kind of thing. And if it's everything's relying on the owner, I got nothing. Uh, in the business, I'm not going to invest in a, or buy a company. I got to do the work. I already got a job. And so does the business work without me doing the work? Uh, or do I have to do the work? And so... You know, I always think, you know, are you, is your company any good? When people call me to help them with their business, you know, first thing I look at, I say, what's your average markup on your bids? 20%. Well, how come your P&L is only 15%? Well, you've got some issues here. You either don't know how to bid. Your crews don't know how to make schedule. You don't have a good job cost tracking system. So the results are the outcome of how you run your business. Your Report card is your is your financials. Just let me see your financials. I'll tell you in five minutes if you know what you're doing. You've got to take responsibility, get your business to work for you, right? And so that's one of the key roles of the owner slash president is to get it working. And if it's not working, you're tolerating poor performance, which is horrible. And so, you know, I used to work for the live work for a living. It was the most horrible day of my life. And so the low bidder works hard on what? It won't deliver the results you want. Working hard on the wrong things won't deliver the results you want. What results do you want? If you're uncomfortable where you are, and that's why you're here today, to learn what I should be doing to get what I want, it all revolves around your vision and your goals. And what are you trying to accomplish here? If you're not happy with where you are, look in the mirror. What are you doing you shouldn't be doing? Or what do you which are, should you do, you're not doing, right? You know what they are. You're just not willing to pull the trigger and make it happen, right? And so you gotta, you got to start working on the right things. 
I don't know if it's your org chart, your people, your delegation, your personal vision, how you manage your people, how you hold them accountable. Uh, do you have a job cost scorecard tracking system? Whatever it is, what is it? Nobody gets rich doing the wrong work. Project management, supervision. The more work I do, the less money I make. The more I'm an estimator, project manager, field supervisor, crew coordinator, the less work time I have to build a great business. So it starts with you. You've got to look in the mirror. I did a whole program on accountability, and I have so many clients, and I keep kicking them. You're not accountable. You are the problem. How, what, how can I fix it? Starts with you. You've got to stop not, you got to stop canceling meetings. You got to stop, stop, stop controlling everything. You got to hire people. You got to delegate. You got to hold them to task. It's you. It's not them. It's you. Look in the mirror. The key successful visionary leaders who sell and market and grow businesses are the key. Can't blame it on your people. Your people work for you. Your input equals their output. So most owners spend way too much time. <coughs> excuse me, doing the wrong things that don't build a business that works for you. You're putting out fires rather than, hey, Joe, fix the fire, rather than go out and find some new thing to do or new customers. So why do company presidents struggle doing what they should be doing? Well, number one, they, they really, most of them are bidding jobs to way too cheap. You're not building customer relationships. You're not spending any time with your customers. They really don't understand the numbers. They hire a bookkeeper who doesn't either, who's really not a professional accounting manager for contractors who know who, who CFMA certified. Number eight, the, the, for, for whatever reason, they're afraid to hire top talent and pay them what the good people uh, need to get paid to run your business. Now, one of my great clients in California, he's a medical contractor, builds a lot of big stuff. And uh, he was struggling with doing everything himself. He finally spit the bullet and wrote a check for 150 plus a year plus benefits and hired a general manager who's really, really good. All of a sudden, the company's taken off in sales. Why? Because my client is out pushing for more work. When you don't have the talent and the people, you're not pushing that hard. You're hoping something, you know, hoping, hoping that doesn't work. And then we have standards and systems and you don't hold them accountable and you don't enforce them and you don't even have them. Or if you got them, they're not used. You allow that to happen. And so you don't hold people accountable to follow the rules, follow the rules, follow the systems. And because of that, you won't let go because you don't have systems. So you can't let go because you can't delegate a non-system to somebody to do it your way. That can't read your mind. So we won't let go. We won't hold people accountable. We won't delegate. And we hope things get better. I, I wish I could show you that email I got this morning. Uh, hey, we're trying to get to get it together. Well, trying doesn't count. You're either doing it or you're not. So I sent him back. So the answer is you're not doing it. You're hoping it gets better. We're waiting to see our progress. We're waiting to see. What are you doing about it? Quit giving me the excuses that I hear every day from, you know, second class contractors. Uh, and so we postpone making those tough decisions because they're hard. They're difficult. I'm gonna have to fire my somebody who've been with me a long time. Was no good, you know. Tough decisions, and 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 so I, I won't improve. I won't make those tough decisions. I won't disrupt what we're currently doing and try something better. And I won't change. I am avoiding the pain of change. You know, if you're gonna fire somebody, it's painful. If you're gonna hold somebody accountable. It's painful. Well, rather than just hold them accountable, I just live with them either, even though they're a C minus, right? So is your business uh, uh, struggling? Why? Look in the mirror and think about what you're doing. Your input equals the output you receive. I can just look at your P&L and tell, me, and tell you um, over the last three years and tell you if you're a good leader manager, economy's grown 10, 20, 30% a year. If you haven't grown, but followed along, what's why? Well, you know, that's, you know, we're trying, we'll try and one of my clients in one of our peer group meetings, we don't try. We either do it or we don't. And we don't allow people to say hopefully or trying in a meeting, period. There's no trying. Do it, whatever it takes, right? And so, you know, are you the CEO, chief, chief do everything for everybody? 
uh, or what? So is your business too dependent on you as the president, owner, general manager, whatever your title is? Uh, are you in control? You make all the big decisions. You tell people what to do all day. You, you don't hire very well. You're afraid to hire. You're afraid to fire. You don't let go. You don't delegate. You don't trust others. Uh, you don't hold people accountable. You're stuck. You can't grow. You can't build a better business. Uh, and so it's like a road closed ahead. You know, you ain't going on this road. It's my way or the highway. You just, it's ain't going anywhere. No, no business plan, no strategic plan. You know, I'm not promoting myself here. Hey, it'd be great if you want to call me, but you know, you don't have any help. You don't have anybody helping you, advising you. You're not in a peer group. Um, you don't have a lot of good systems that are tracked and monitored. Your job cost tracking system is, you know, two months late. Uh, you, you don't have people held accountable to meet deadlines and make finish your jobs on time with no punch list and no callbacks. You don't really have much sales and marketing, maybe. Maybe your estimating is just bidding low bid and you hope it all works out, and et cetera. Fill in your own blanks. So here's the tombstone of an entrepreneur who fails to realize that the genius who starts a small company cannot and will not be the same person who manages a larger company. Management and ownership are two different things. Managers manage owners, entrepreneur, visionary leaders. It takes both. And most people can't do both. I'm a visionary leader. I'm the worst manager. I know how to tell people to manage because I do this for a living. But the point is, I'm, I'm not built as a manager, but I think I'm a manager. I'm a visionary leader, entrepreneur, creative, innovator, disrupt the status quo, build capacity, grow, make it happen, see, a, see, a, see something out there and go get it. That's me. It's not manage the details. So I have to get a good project manager, a good estimating manager, a good financial manager, and then I just work with them to manage the group. That's my vision. That's how I can do it. I could never do it myself. And I start getting in the middle of jobs problems and job issues. I just screw them all up because I don't see the big picture on the job. I'm not there every day. So, so you got to realize it takes two kind of people to run, lead, manage a successful, profitable business. All right. So, you know, look at Bill Gates on uh, Microsoft. You know, he's a creative genius and he brings in, uh, 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 the guy who owns the Clippers, uh, I'm drawing a blank on his name here. I pro probably should know it, living in uh, near near Los Angeles. Uh, Balmer, he brings in Balmer, and Balmer's the manager. Hey, Balmer made just as much money as, as uh, you know, Gates. Balmer bought the Clippers for $2 billion. That's not too bad for a manager. So, but he's not the visionary leader. Uh, so there, you need two to tango. And I'm not saying go out and hire number two. I'm saying you need to start promoting people for the future. And so the question is, why are you in business? You're in business to make a profit. Well, how are you doing? You're making enough that you have investments. You have retirement fund. You got plenty of money to retire at 60 or 65. You don't have to ever work again. No. So what do we got to do? We got to build a business to deliver what you want. What do you want? I want to have 20, 30,000 a month passive income when I'm 60 without the construction company plus the construction company. Or maybe I sell it to my family or to my kids or to my employees and I keep a small percentage, but I still got passive income. What do you want? You want to keep working until somebody gives you something? I don't know. And so what do you want? I, I want to make a profit and I want the profit to generate enough high margins so I can build a business that works for me and I don't have to work there every day. I'm just the leader and I can own investment producing passive income properties in uh, companies. That's what I want. And so what do you want? What do you want? You want to keep working full time, making all the decisions, going crazy, losing all your hair, <laughs> going home and have to whine to your spouse, tell them why you're born home or why you can't go to, why well, you have to go in the office on Saturday, whatever it is, right? Uh, and so why are you in business? So I write articles for Metal News every month, Masonry Magazine, Construction Business Owner, and a couple others. And I get a lot of emails. And, you know, why are you in business? I want my business to give me what I want. Well, first thing is, what do you want? Owner has to have a vision. 
where do you want this business to go? If you don't have a written five-year vision, and my my template is called the Biz Builder Blueprint, which you get with my book, where you where we work together to develop your business plan, your core values, your mission, your strategies, your systems, your financial tracking, your estimating and marketing program, et cetera, to develop a great business. If you don't have a plan to develop a great business that's written and you can review with your team every month, what do you got? It's all in your head. I don't know where I want to go. I get busy every day. I don't have time. And so so what do I want? Uh, I want? I want steady customers. I want good managers who run the business and bring projects in on budget. I want to know our costs. I want to have accounting run like a pro. I don't want to have, I mean, I, if I know more than my accounting person, we're in trouble because I never went to accounting uh, college or school or, and I'm not a CPA or a professional construction controller, a full charge bookkeeper. I, I know what I want. I know what numbers I need, but I don't want to know how to do it. I don't want to know how to do a tax, re tax return or a balance the P&L. That's not what I want to know. Uh, journal entries. I don't want to know how to do that. I want to know where we are. And so I want to grow my business. I want to make more money. I want to always make a profit. And I want to do lots of things. What do you want? You want uh, you want money where you're getting just a little bit of money? Or are you making enough? Hey, if you're happy, I'm not picking on you here. You're happy. Good. But most of us want more. Most business owners have got an entrepreneurial bug and a spirit to drive to get more. And so more is what I want more and it start it, it'll start your road to happiness and value and in significance in your life and and you'll have more time for what you want to do whether it's family friends church charities whatever you want to get involved with buying more investments that's what i want to focus on and so it'll make me uh, have more freedom <clears throat> if i got <laughs> If I'm financially strong, I don't need to wait for my paycheck to pay my bills. Um, I've got, I've got it. I'm set. I've got passive income coming in on a regular basis. Whether I, whether the economy is good or bad, it just keeps rolling in, right? And so, so I can have health, wealth, happiness, all those kinds of things. So, what do you want? Where are you? Where do you want to go? What do you want to happen? And so, it takes time and money. If people hire me. To help them with their business, I see it's going to take two things. You got to pay me; I'm not free, and I'm also going to make you invest time for improvement. If you want your people to get better, you got to hire better people, and you got to have training and mentoring and coaching. You can't just hope it gets better. So I need money for that, and that'll create some time for me to do what I want to do with my time, whether it's sell more, hire more, uh, train better. Uh, build customer relationships, whatever it is. So the key is, what do you want? I've got to know what I want. Uh, in in uh, What do I want? What do I want my future to be and achieve? Number one, what, I got to have something to aim at. Written targets and goals. And I'm going to share with my, my top, my, my, my company. Here's where we're going and here's what we need to get better. Uh, I need to have a plan, a, a strategic written plan with, with uh, you know charts and graphs and org charts and financial plans to achieve the goals I want to achieve. If I want to grow from 10 million to 20 million, what do I have to do to double my sales and double my profit or triple my profit? Uh, and then I have to keep track. I have to have an ongoing tracking system to know that I'm going to stay on track. So these are my key three points. I've I've been using these for 20 plus years as a presenter and a coach. What the heck do you want? I want to hire an estimator. Why? Why do you want to hire that? Because we need to grow. Okay, so do you, what, you want a cheap one or a good one? You want to grow with profit or no profit? Do you want to miss stuff or not? Oh, yeah, good point. Okay, so let's hire a good estimator. Somebody who's got experience and you don't have to watch them all day. Rather than a cheap one, you got to babysit all day. And then, of course, we've got to consistently improve results consistently improved results. Uh, and I'm not satisfied with 5%. Let's just say that's my net profit goal. I'm not, I, I wanna, what can I do to make it six or seven? That's the key. Uh, what can I do 
to improve my productivity out in the field? What can I do to uh, add a new client base or a market? What can I do? So what do you want? What's your role? What do you want to do? It starts with you. What decisions do you need to make to achieve what you want? What standards and systems do you need to implement? So the key is what results do you want? And so you can continue on growing. Most companies grow for about three or four years and they get stuck at the same level because now I've got to make some tough choices. I can micromanage and manage a company to a certain level. Everybody has a different level of management ability, whether it's 1 million, 3 million, 5 million, 7 million, 20 million. Everybody has a different level or a threshold of pain. That's what I call it, what you can take. And so you continue to do the same thing and then you get stuck doing the same thing and you'd say stuck forever. How do I get to the next level? How do I how do I get higher, better results? I've got to make a choice. And this is my leadership gap, effectiveness gap. I'm the decision maker. I have to decide what we're going to do to achieve our goals as the president. So I can continue like the guy on the phone or the email this morning. Well, we're going to see, we're going to wait and see how we're doing. Well, he's just going to continue doing nothing different and hope it gets better. If you want to improve, you got to do something different. What are you going to do different? Well, if you're a base, baseball or basketball football coach and you're not winning, what do you do at halftime? You call new plays and try a new strategy. It ain't working. And I'm going to get fired. Now, in construction, you own the company. Who's going to fire you? Well, the only guy would be the bankruptcy court, and that's probably not going to happen because you can limp along. And so what do we got going here? So you got to decide. You've got to decide what your vision is and what you're willing to do to get to that level. And so you can decide to do a lot or a little, and uh, it's you. And Or you can decide to do nothing. Don't do anything. So it's you. And if you're not doing anything, you've decided to just stay stuck and live with the success you're currently achieving or not achieving. If you're not willing to do what you need to do, you are the throttle that shuts off the valve to grow. And so it's a yes or no. There's no maybe, hopefully. It's either a yes or no. And I've started using this. I learned this from one of my great, wise customer clients. He's been with me for 10 years plus. And I, yeah, I just played golf with him last week. We had a lot of fun. And uh, I learned this from who. It's There's no like middle ground. It's either you're going to do it or you're not. And when I get coaching clients, it's like, you're going to do it or you're not. And I've got a couple that, uh, I've got more than a couple that, yeah, we're going to do it. And then they don't. There's always an excuse. Well, we're trying. We're getting around to it. We're, we're trying to do our best. And so it's either red or green. There's no yellow. So it's either no, you're going to try, hopefully, maybe work and we're waiting to see or there's a yes. There's no in the middle. It's either you're either going to do it or you're not. So get over it. Ain't getting better unless you do it. So uh, so think about the president's role. And this is from one of my good clients out of Colorado, Easy Excavation. The, and we we joked, and I was helping him, coaching him, and he was too involved. I went to his office. It looked like a hurricane hit it. He got piles of plans. And sp his office was right in the middle of everybody. <laughs> Everybody kept dumping stuff on his dad. I said, what are we going to do here? You got to stop. You got to stop doing the work. So he's totally hands off now. And he's he really turned the company around, doing a great job. Went from 30 million. He's up to 40, 45 now. Doing great. And he's not doing anything on the jobs. He's not managing people. He's not doing estimates. He's managing the, co the company, the leaders, the vision, and the customers. And that's what I want you to think about. So what do I have to do to get to the next level? What do I have to do to keep moving to a higher level? What do I have to do to build capacity, improve, and innovate? I've got to make a personal decision to turn off the valve. And so I got this valve here. I'll show you. I always carry this valve around with me when I'm working with people and give everybody a valve. And there's your business. What's your potential? Well, you got a huge potential. I was on the phone this, this morning with a guy. I said, you you should be doing 15 million. He's stuck at six to eight. He has the brains and the knowledge to build a great business. He's not willing. He just told me, well, I'm going to think about it. it, it, it and it's not that I'm pushing him. I want to help him. 
It's like he can't even see how great he is. He's thinking, oh, I can't find any help or uh, the customers. I said, yeah, you're bidding crummy work against too many cheap competitors. Get out of that market and get into something good, you know? So he shut the valve. And so what's your potential? You got sales coming in. How do we improve the sales and the type of sales and the margin on the sales so that we can come out at the end and build some profit and build some value and, and grow? Those are the three things I want you to think about. And so what's shutting off your valve? What's shutting off your growth? You've got a valve right in front of you, and it's you. You're leaking money, you're low profits, no growth. What are you doing to shut that valve, restrict the flow? That's you, right? And so think about what I have to do to move to the next level. And so I got to stop doing what I'm currently doing and implement new things, new strategies, new plays. I got to let go. I got to hire. I got to delegate. I put systems in. I got to hold people accountable, right? So, so what do you, what do you, what must you do? Okay. So let's turn to page four and talk about you for a few minutes and then we'll move on. Page four. Uh, let's take a look at that. And, uh, I want you to think about what this is about a one hour exercise. I'm going to try to do it in five minutes here. Okay. So you can take the sheet four back with you and uh, talk about how I can improve and what should we focus on. Um, so, so what I want you to do is, is write in there, list out your company's most important functions, jobs, tasks, uh, uh, activities, roles, priorities, what are the most important things that you must do to be successful? All right. So here's here's a here's a little sample. You know, you got to lead, you got to manage, project manager, you got to run the field, you got to make sure the jobs come in on budget. What do you just jot down a few things? What do you think are the most important activities and responsibilities and priorities that you must do to achieve your goal? All right. I'll give you a minute to write that down and list them out. List five or six things if you have time. So what are the things that you should be on your top list that you should be doing or want to do or the company needs to have done? Well, I'll just, you know, we got to keep this moving here. We don't have all day. So uh, first thing is the company has to have a vision. The manager's got to know what they're accountable to achieve. We got to make sure our finances are timely. We, get, we need weekly job cost reports for every crew. They need to know where they are. Um, we need to collect our money. Construction needs to be organized and systemized with a clear flow chart of who's accountable for what and what are the deadlines, right? Estimating is accuracy. You've got to have a system to create accurate estimate, estimates based on what our crew can do and with no missed items for general contractors. We have to have a, we have to have a sales plan to generate loyal customers that give us more work even or negotiate with us versus just always cheap. Right, we got to have a talent and employee development program that generates great people, attracts great people, and makes them want to work for us. Those are just some ideas. All right, so let's take that idea. If you've written them out. Hopefully, I've gotten a few down. And then what I want you to do is um, rank them in order of priority. One, two, three, four, five, six. What do you think the top rank them? Okay. Got it? Quick. One through six. Then I want you to run a line through. Uh, uh, rank them in order. And then what percentage of your time are you currently spending on those? On number one, number two, number three, number four. Is it 10%, 40%, zero? So if you got 40 hours a week or 50, you work five hours, it's 10%. What percent of your time do you focus on the top priority items in your company? All right. So now what I want you to do is go through the list 
and cross out the least the least important. Next, cross out the next important. That cross out the next. So now we have three top priorities. So the question is, what is your three top priorities? And how much time are you spending on those? You should be spending like 80% of your time on your top three, right? What are you spending? All right, so that's the key here. So let's go to the middle of the page there. We've got a little chart there. These are some of my top clients. Some of these guys, the guy in the middle here, when I first met him, he's doing like 15 million. He's doing, um, I don't know, he just hit, uh, he just hit 100 million. So what are your top strengths? Um, what are your top, you personally, what are your top strengths? I'm a good estimator. I'm a good visionary leader. I'm a good customer developer. Those are my top three. What are yours? Your top four. What, should, what are you the best at? All right. So obviously the part two of that is what you should, what are you what are you the worst at? What shouldn't you be doing? I shouldn't be managing people. I can manage jobs. That's different than people. But I can't manage foremen and project managers. I'm not I'm not good at that. But I can manage jobs. It's a little different. Project management is not the same as uh, people management. And then the real question I want to ask you is what do, what do you don't want to do? What do you don't like to do? I don't want to manage people. I don't want, I, I, I want to, I want to manage the future of the business and manage it, work with customers. That's what I want to do. And maybe make sure the estimates are accurate. But I don't want to go out of the field that often. I don't want to schedule crews. What do you don't want to do? What do you want to do? What are you doing you don't want to do anymore? Really, what shouldn't you be doing, right? Okay, so keep it moving here. I got to keep it moving. Next, let's go back to that first sheet at the top of the page there. What are your top priorities, all right? So circle your top three. What are your top three that you want to do, you must do in order to build a great business? What's are your top three priorities and roles? And responsibilities. So, you know, number one, I, I should be a good estimator. I should, I should not do it, but watch it. I know my numbers. Number two, maybe, uh, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm really good with customers. I need to spend more time with customers. Number three, I'm good uh, um, generating people to want to work for us. I don't want to do the HR. But I'm good when people come in to convince them to come to work for us and work with them and encourage them. But I'm not a manager. I'm an, I'm an encourager, motivator. I'm good at that. What are you good at? What do you think your top pri three priorities that you ought to be doing? Well, for most presidents, it's the same. And I'll give you the list in a minute. It's the same. For most construction companies that are really, really good, the owner focuses on the same three or four priorities. And we'll cover that in a minute. So you, what percent of your time are you currently spending on those? And what percentage of your time should you spend or would you want to adjust your calendar to accomplish? In order to do that, you're going to have to transfer and delegate, right? So I don't know. I should spend two days a week sales and marketing. I should spend one day a week estimating and one day a week on talent development and one day a week running around and looking at the jobs. Uh, in managing the business. But currently, I'm spending all my time on jobs or estimating or doing the takeoffs. I mean, come on. That doesn't help your company grow. You should hire somebody to do that. Well, you don't have any money. Well, it's because you're not doing the right things. You're working rather than growing. It's you. Let's figure it out. That's why we're here today. Okay, so what are your priorities? What are your priorities? Let's turn to page five. Page five looks like this. Page five. Uh, I'll get you, Corey, in a minute. All right, page five. 
Um, All right, so page five, here we go. Uh, pres CEO president's focus. All right, so if we if we look at, uh, oh, I'm sorry, let's go back a page, page four. I forgot the last two things. What are your priorities? What should you start doing and what should you stop doing? All right, what should you start doing more of and eliminating, delegating, transferring to other people? So that's the part two of that page four exercise. Sorry, let's go to page five. So what are presidents focus on? The presidents of Fortune 500 companies focus on three things. They focus, number one, on results. I mean, that's the overview, results. But number one, they focus on profit, quarterly earnings, monthly profits, job profits. That's the key. Got to make money. We need a profit. We need to have a, a, a profit every month so we can have a, a distribution to the stockholders, the owners. Number two, they focus on the, building the value of the business, growing the equity, growing the, the presence in the marketplace, growing the sellability of the company, the value. Equity. Most of us take the equity out and spend it. Well, that's okay if you spend it on buying an investment property, but spend it for a vacation home is not business value. And then sales revenue. we got to continue to grow. So we don't grow by doing the same thing. We grow by expanding our services, our markets, our ideas, uh, our add-on value. If you do, uh, I don't know, uh, sewer water, sewer, sewer and water, what could you do to expand? You could provide services to the water district. You could be an emergency call. You could do an annual service uh, contract with them for certain things. Got a client in the Boston area who that's what they do and they continue to grow in more cities and do more more value and now now they've added uh, the new construction as well what else could you do they're building their growth their re recurring revenue stream right but if i spend all my time on estimating and bidding and customer work and production and schedule material equipment crews superintendents foremen people job costs change orders billings getting paid I'm not focused on the majors. I'm focused on the minors. I've got to focus on what makes a difference in our company. So when you come to a fork in the road, what are you going to do? You can go towards achieving high-end results, or you can go for the same thing you've always done. It's your choice. Every day you make a decision. Am I going to do better things or the same things? That's what I want you to really, really think about. Every day... You've got to be an innovative disruptor, creator of new ideas to grow the business and move it to the higher level, not just continue to work hard and do the same. Hard work doesn't make you wealthy. And so just like the little kid says to a teacher after a report card, you'll find my test results are a pretty good indication of your abilities as a leader. Just show me your P&L. Your, did your sales grow more than inflation? Did your profits continue to go higher, not lower, your markup, your margin, your percentages, instead of five, do they go to six or seven? Um, do you have some ongoing recurring revenue? Show me that. Let me see your callbacks. Let me see if your field labor's hitting their budget for field labor. Do you know how to estimate? Are you missing things? There's basic things that affect your bottom line, and there's a long list of questions we go through to determine what we need to work on first when I'm working with you. So so what so business is a game of your leadership. You as the leader, your decisions, your priorities, your focus, your drive, and your skills, and your effort and your vision. That's the key here. So, and money's your scoreboard. Just look at your PL. If it ain't what you want, look in the mirror. What do I have to do different to call a different play? You know, if I'm not winning, I get fired if I'm a football coach. And when I own a construction company, I just keep doing the same thing. I hope it gets better. That doesn't cut it for me. That is my worst client. I hate those kind of clients because I, I keep kicking them and they don't they don't do nothing. So just I fire you. My goal is to help you get to the next level, not to watch you struggle. So anyway, what's your role and responsibility? President's role is to lead. I want you to think about lead, 
manage the overall operations, not a job, direct the managers and the management team, communicate and implement the vision, core values, systems and strategies, make sure it's happening so you can achieve the expected results that you want to achieve. So what, you, what do you focus on? What are your top priorities? What are your current accountabilities? What, what do you need to change and add to your top list? So at the, on page five, what are your current top priorities? What should they be? Uh, the second box down on page five, what should they be? Then we're gonna cover that in just a second. What are they now? What should they be? I can't believe some of you are still getting out there at seven, five in the morning and telling your crews where to go. Come on, get a senior field manager to take care of that and delegate it. Get up, stop going in there at seven. Go take your customers to lunch or breakfast, right? That's the key. And what else should be on your top priority? That's what I want you to think about. When I come in and help you, we're focused on the top priorities and you're gonna do it. It's not them, it's you. You're gonna make it happen. Now, I'm not saying you're gonna create a training program, but you're gonna make sure there is a training program and you're gonna delegate it to someone in your company to be the head trainer or the head safety person or the head uh, cost estimating accuracy person. You know, your estimator gets a raise if they bid accurately with no missed items, not do a good takeoff, right? Winning work is not a function of the estimator. Winning work is accuracy. And then you the markup changes and negotiating in sales is what makes you get more work. And then what should not be on your priority list? Or what should you not be doing? You know, we're having a meeting here. We should be having a meeting. Who? Why aren't you having meetings? Well, you don't have time because you're too busy, you know, too much on your plate, right? Okay, so what are your top priorities? These are some of my top clients. And they all do 100 million plus, and they all started at 20 million or 10 million. Uh, one of them took over for his dad, but but uh, two of these guys started basically from scratch, and they're all well over 100 million in sales, and they all make incredibly great profit margins. So what's the key here? Number one, um, accountabilities and responsibilities. Number one. Provide visionary leadership and overall management. Overall uh, observation and managing of the business. But leadership and vision is the key. Not do the work. So your top role has to have a vision, values, mission, where you're headed, and we need to know how we're doing on it. And we need to communicate the vision on a regular basis so everybody knows where we're going and why we're doing what we need to do. Number two, we got to have a business plan. And I call mine the Biz Builder Blueprint. If you want one, send me an email and I'll send you one, a sample. It's an Excel spreadsheet. And it comes with my book if you're interested. It tells you how to fill it out and stuff. So we got to have a business plan. Most of us don't. Yeah, we say we do. I want to go from 10 million to 12 million. Well, that's not a plan. How are you going to do it? Well, we need to do this, 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 and this. We need to hire this person. We need to put this system in. We need to add mailings, whatever we need to do, right? Number three, we need to get high margin results. We need a program that'll get us the highest margin results, not the cheapest results, the highest margin results. If the average contractor, general contractor in the United States makes 4%, 5%, how do we get to 7 I've got to do something different to get seven if the average is five. I got to stop doing the same kind of commodity work. If I'm an interior, I got T-bar ceilings. There's no money in T-bar ceilings. Anybody can put up a T-bar ceiling. Anybody can do drywall. How do I improve my value added so I can do more to make more? So what I have to do, it's not just about accounting. It's about creative thinking to improve, innovate, and do something better. Number four, I got to make sure I got systems that are maintained, monitored, and enforced. So we got to have, I don't have to do the systems. I have to push for the team to create the systems. And then we have to make sure they're enforced, no exceptions. Everybody in the company has to follow the systems. And if we're going to a software program, if we're going to 
job startup checklists, if we're going to change order management, there's no... Sorry, neighbor's dog. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, so anyway, so we've got to we've got to get our systems on board. Number five, we got to make sure our construction's running the, per the contract documentation. Uh, our field performance achieves the crew hour results. All those kinds of things. Very important. That's very important. Number six, we got to have a talent development program that maintains coaches and builds a great place to work that attracts the best people. So that's one thing I got to make sure happens. And then I got to grow the business. So I've got to spend time selling to good customers that I want to work with so I can get good contracts and not always sell low price. That's part of my role. I don't really have much if, I, if I'm just a bidding contractor, keeps bidding. I, I don't have much to sell. What are you selling? The potential to bid? Well, I don't need you. I, I haven't created much value because I don't have any ongoing, regular, repeat, current clients that spit out work for us. And number eight, really important, I got to develop the wealth building opportunities and passive income investments. I got to really focus on that. So that to me, that's one day a week. That one, or at least a half a day a week. If I'm not focused on that, it's never going to happen. I'm waiting until I'm 70 to start that. Well, okay, keep waiting, right? So so what do I have to do? Well, first of all, back on the sheet, I want you to decide what, what you need to work on. That's your role. Those are the seven or eight things that you need to really be focused on. And what are you doing about it? If you're, if you're still doing takeoffs and estimating and running jobs and managing crews, you're not doing one through eight. You're, you're doing part of five, little bitty part, but the whole business needs a whole plan. All right. So, so what do we got to do? We got to commit to bottom of page five. We got to commit to improve. Uh, we got to commit to grow. We got to commit to build capacity. I want your top focus for people is to build capacity so you can do more with more, more profit. Capacity is the key. And I got to stop estimating and stop managing projects. I got to get into the leadership role versus the do role. And I've got to delegate and stop doing the work. In order to make that happen, I got to build a strong management team. And I've got to start hiring for managers. So if I'm looking for a new project manager, I'm not going to hire a junior. I'm going to hire somebody who's got potential to manage a big part of my operation. If I'm looking for an estimate, I'm looking, not looking for a junior takeoff person because they're cheap. That means I still got to do the bids. I'm looking for someone who's senior and can present bids to great clients. And I just uh, attend the meeting. And they, they're good presenters. They understand the process, they, their accuracy. They make good decisions with suppliers and subcontractors. They really can help me build a great company. And uh, they're accountable. And then, um, and I've got to be, I love this picture. Pete Carroll, one of my favorite coaches of all times. I went to USC and won, won a lot of championships there with Pete and then he went to Seattle. But here he is. I mean, he's a motivational communicator. So I'm the head coach. I'm the CEO, chief, not everything, enforcement officer. I make sure things happen. I've got plays. We're going to use them. I'm the chief improvement officer, CIO. I'm the chief motivational officer. I'm the chief reminder officer. I got to continually remind people our vision and values and where we're headed. And I'm the chief sales officer. I'm the chief talent officer. I want to make sure we got great talent building for the future. So that's what I have to think about my role, not just do work. What are you going to not do? What are you going to start doing? All right. Here's a long list here. And it seems overwhelming. Just pick one thing. Get started. Right. And so then I always like to remind you of the pizza rule of management. Pizza rule of management. Pizza rule of management is maximum five to six reports. Five to six reports. And so what are you going to do about five to six reports? 
you, 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 get, you already got, I'm sure if I ask people in your company, if, if I, who's your boss? And they're all going to say you. Well, you got 12 people think you're their boss and you're not. The reason you're getting all those calls is because you haven't told people, I don't, you don't work for me, you work for Joe or Susie or whoever. So what are we going to do about it? On page six, I have a very detailed job description. I don't want to walk through this whole thing. You, it's just a refer, re, reference for you. <clears throat> you're accountable for these results, and you're responsible for doing the performance of these things. And so there's another list uh, on the left side. It's in the same order as the, pre, uh, as, as the previous page. On the right side is more tasks, activities, responsibilities, and things you've got to do on a regular basis. I don't want you to do these items. I want you to make sure they're happening. So we can transfer a lot of these to your key people. Okay. All right. So uh, let me just check our time here. Yeah, we're still got a few minutes. Um, so page seven and eight. And um, so let's go to page seven. We'll just skim through that and we'll continue on for the next five or 10 minutes. So let's talk about leadership, page seven. Are you, think of an effective leader. Who's an effective leader? Well, you got a lot of presidents, some you like, some you don't, some you remember. What, what are they remembered for? Their leadership. They don't do the work. They create the ideas and make sure it's happening. That's what they do. That's your job. Uh, so what makes a, an effective leader is achieving results in, in its Achieving results. It's not doing the work. The more you do, the less you make. The more you lead, the more you make. So, so what do I have to do? I have to become a better leader. Achieve winning results through people. It's not me. It's my people. I hire people to do the work that will achieve the results. That's what all leaders have in common. They work through people. And the key, how do you know if they want to work for you? You've got to have people who want to do what you want them to do. So they have to be motivated and inspired to go for the vision. They've got to be communicated with. They've got to be encouraged. They've got to be trusted, treated like treated, treated with respect and honor. So a leader is a person in charge of others who leads and has a clear, inspiring vision directs, guides, doesn't do, motivates, inspires, and influences others to want to follow and achieve results and goals at a higher level. <clears throat> the key is influence others to want. So you've got a bad employee, it doesn't show up on time. What can you do to influence them and encourage them to want to do what you want them to do? You, It's you. What can you do or what can your people do other than just beating them up and calling them out and screaming at them, what would make them want to do what you want them to do? If I want my crew to finish their job within the hours in the labor budget, what do I have to do? If I don't give them some things to do to make sure it happens, it won't happen. So I've got to have a job startup meeting where we talk about how many hours they have and we talk about the performance plan and we lay out the schedule and the milestones so they're clear. Then I have to have a weekly update of how many hours we've spent versus the budget. And so we have a review meeting with our foreman or our crew leaders on a weekly basis to bring them up to speed of where they are and what they have to do to continue either staying ahead or behind all the way through. And at the end, we got to not let them off the job until the punch list and walkthroughs complete with our customer. And then we have an incentive program that makes them want to do what we want them to do. And it's black and white. It's not a, a mushy. It's based on results. You hit the numbers, you make money. It's simple. So my job is to think about that and make sure it, ha make sure it gets implemented. Now, what's a coach? A coach, so you have to wear two hats, coach and leader. It's kind of the same, but a little different. Coaches are a little more hands-on. They set, monitor, and achieve goals. And you're accountable and responsible 
to accomplish the results. Isn't that it? Coach gets fired if you don't win. By what? Here's the action plan. Manage, not do, manage, implement strategy. Got to call some plays. Got to direct. You got to mentor, train, teach, support, influence, motivate. Encourage and challenge players to improve, grow, grow, play as a team. The other thing that's not on here, I mean, I think it should be is, uh, well, it's sort of implied is enforce. Got to make sure they're doing what they're supposed to do, right? So it's a little more hands-on. So unfortunately, the smaller construction companies, you got 30 people, you're still a coach. And your, form, your general manager is a coach and your foreman's a coach, right? So how do you know... If you're an effective coach, winning leader, how do you know? Uh, here's a couple of coaches. Uh, those guys, so Pete Carroll's a motivational, visionary leader. Chuseski from Duke, who retired, he's more of a playmaker, and the kids love him. He's always built a great team because he's really good at working with the team, communicating, and motivating. He's not on the field. So they have a vision. They have a winning game plan. They don't go on the field. They have good assistance for the training and implementation. And they have the right players in the right positions with the right talent and the right job descriptions. They have regular team meetings. They review the goals and the track the targets and the score. And they win. They win, right? And they achieve results through people. So you have to change your mind from a dictator to a coach. You do it my way or the highway, or let's work together to see how I can help you improve. And then we'll track it and see how we do. So what do we have to do? So I've got to remember that people follow the leader, not the boss. Your input equals their output. High control equals low performance. The more you control them, the less you perform. they perform. Low control, high performance. So the question is, are you an inspiring leader? What are you, what are you doing you should or shouldn't be doing? And then you say, well, I wish my people were more accountable and responsible. Well, why aren't they accountable and responsible? Number one, they don't know what you want. Number two, you're not really motivating them. You're not mentoring. You're, not, you're just screaming at them. And number three, uh, you don't trust people to make decisions without checking with you first. So you get a lot of phone calls. Help, help. Can you help me? And so... So how do we hold people accountable? Number one, you got to be accountable. You got to be accountable to yourself. If you tell somebody to get back to me, you got to get back to me. If you have a regular crew meeting on Tuesdays, you got to be there. You can't not be accountable. If you tell your estimator to do something and they don't do it, you got to make sure they're doing it. Because then you're not accountable and they're not accountable. If they're if you're not accountable, they're not going to be accountable. Why should they? You know, your input equals their output. And number and, and uh, clear expectations. They've got to know exactly clearly what you want, what you need. Written job description, rich, written targets, written goals, wit, written updates and feedback and scorecards. Uh, you got to have that. And then your job is to uh, monitor it and enforce it. That's what you have to do. And then you, in order to make that happen, you got to you got to let go and delegate and Stop micromanaging. Let other people make decisions. They're not going to grow if they were asking you all day what decisions to make. So when you're responsible for everything, you know, it's not working. You probably got a sign around the desk, around your chest that says, I solve other people's problems. And you're real proud of that. So when people bring you problems, guess what? You help them, and then they bring you more problems. People don't become accountable because you won't let them because you are controlling them by wanting to make all the decisions for them. You're not allowing them to make decisions right or wrong and learn from their mistakes and coach them through it. So when I solve other people's problems, they just continually bring me more problems. And when people are responsible for nothing, they keep going back to the boss and, and, because, and now they're responsible for nothing, right? So what do we have to do? So man, I love this Pete Carroll picture again. There's his head coach when he was at Seattle. There's his uh, offensive coordinator, I mean. There's Pete. He's getting ready to motivate. His head coach, his, his offensive coordinator is calling the plays. Pete's not calling the plays. He never calls the plays. He has a strategy meeting before the game to call the plays, and then maybe they'll stop and talk about it. But the head head uh, offensive coordinator is calling the plays. And, uh, and so 
It's not about control. Leading is about not about doing the work. It's about getting people to want to do the work. So the question is, we got to stop controlling and let go and delegate and trust. And when you, that's the key here. Get, get with them, motivate them, encourage them, show them, train them, coach them. That's what we have to do as a leader. And so here's a picture of me back in the, I don't know, 20, 25 years ago. I actually, well, I didn't have much hair then either, but there's my desk. Look at, I was Mr. Do-It-All. And that, that just created problems. And when you do too much yourself, yourself, what happens? You don't do what you need to be doing. You spend too much time doing what other people should be doing. And you, you, you don't get achieve your goals. So I've got to let go to grow, to make more dough. It's the only way I can grow my business. Is I got to stop, let go, hire, delegate, trust others. Uh, and uh, I finally, back before we had the internet and the computers like we do now, I had this little stamp. Somebody bring me something, I stamp on it. Please handle this and don't tell me what you did. I wanted them to have to make the decision. And so I have to get off the field, stop solving other people's problems, uh, get off the field, and of course, delegate and transfer responsibility, right? So what happens is when I'm too busy working, I do too much myself and I don't trust, delegate, coach, train, spend more time with customers, all the things I need to be doing. I just focus on the job. Well, I shouldn't be doing a job. I should be the leader, owner, visionary, uh, uh, leader of the company. The harder I work, the less I do. Uh, I'm doing my job and everybody else's. So I got this sign around my neck that says, I solve other people's problems. So do you have a monk? You got too many monkeys on your back? People keep bringing you stuff. You take it home, you put it on your back, and you're going to solve their problem. When you take their problem and put it on your back, they're waiting for you to solve their problem. Now, you're an employee of your worker. So your workers, oh, I gave that to Joe. He's supposed to take care of that. So he's just sitting out there waiting for you. Now he's accountable for nothing because you took it away from him. So are you a compulsive money picker-upper? Uh, you go out on a job and you take them, you guys say, hey, can you do this, do this? And you take a bunch of notes and you go back and solve all their problems for them. So the more monkeys you take, the more you get. So I got to stop solving other people's problems and I got to, get the monkey off my back and onto their back. So I uh, so I created these signs. Um, I've got a sample or two here. I created these signs, and uh, I gave them to all my clients. Um, here we go. Here's one. Stop solving other people's problems. So, but guess what? So this face is me. And guess what's on the other side? When the guy walks into my office, it says, what's your solution? I know you got a problem. What do you think your solution is? That's the question. I'm not here to solve your problem. I'm here to coach you, advise you, uh, not even approve it. I just want to hear your ideas, and then we'll say, okay, that sounds good. What's your what's your solution? <laughs> solution. And uh, what's your solution? That's the key. <clears throat> and then we'll say, I'm going to try to do this. No. No, it's yes or no. What are you going to do? I'm not letting you off the, oh, we're going to try to do that. No, you're either going to do it or you're not. You're going to get the guy out there or you're not. You're going to finish on time or you're not. You're going to do what you have to do or not. What are you going to do? Is it yes or no? There's no There's no try. And so that's the key here. That, that doesn't cut it in my world. So I want you to think about how you create these problems by doing what you continually do. So then I have to make it a priority to make to become a manager. So I, it, in, unless I have a manager, like a general manager, so I've got two project managers and an estimator reporting to me and maybe a superintendent. I got to manage them as well as lead them. So some of our smaller companies, I don't have the luxury of a field operations manager or a, a, a project con, a contract manager. I've got me and two or three people that are reporting to me. So I have to make time to manage my managers. So I call it a managing manager. So I have to have time to what? Uh, meet with my weekly with every direct report one-on-one for a half hour to an hour and go through the list of things I, that they're expected to do. I'm now their boss, their manager. So if I don't meet with them one-on-one -on -one with the door closed, it's just, hey, how are you doing? Well, I'm pretty good. Well, are you on schedule? Yeah, pretty much, which means, which means no. 
Uh, then I have to review their performance, their results. We're going to go through the list of things they're required to do, and I'm going to enforce and hold them accountable. What's going on here? You didn't get this done. And what gonna, what's it going to take to get this done? And then I'm going to coach them through it. If you need some help, I'm here to help. Let's talk about it. What do you need to do to make a good decision? And then uh, and I'm going to be the chief reminder officer. Hey, we got to hit these goals or else we're not going to have a company here. So chief reminder officer, that's the key. So I got to meet weekly with my direct reports to monitor and hold them accountable and mentor and coach them. And then uh, what, what meetings do I want to have? Well, number one, I've got to have an assistant. I want my assistant. I'm going to meet with them every morning for 20 minutes and go through the list of what I want them to do and did they do what I asked them to do. I'm going to meet with my direct reports every week, one-on-one. I'm going to eat with my, meet with my estimating and sales team every week. We're going to have a sales and estimating meeting weekly, every meeting. Most companies do it Monday morning. So we know what jobs we're bidding, leads coming in. What can we do to get more work? It's really a focus. Uh, I'm going to meet with my financial manager, my bookkeeper, my controller every week. It's a one-hour meeting. We're going to go through the whole P&L, all the job costs, the cash report, receivables, payables. We're going to go through it like a pro. We're not going to hope it happens. So this is what, this is what I have to do. I'm going to meet with my management team monthly and go through, are you achieving this? Are you doing this? How are we doing? And then uh, I'm going to meet with my project manager that I directly report to me every month to go through the financials. Every job, I'm going to look at the financials with them and see if you're on schedule and all those other things. And lastly, uh, I'm gonna, there, there's a logistics meeting. A lot of companies have logistics. Who's going where? I don't really want to be in that meeting, but if i got a small company, I might have to be in that meeting as, a, as the owner. We want to make sure we have job startup turnover meetings where we turn it over from estimating project management and supervision informant. We want to have those meetings. Those, I don't have to attend that, but they need to be happening. Um, we want to have weekly scorecards for every crew with every foreman reviewed by their by their supervisor. Uh, we want to have an all PM, all superintendent, or all foreman meeting every month to go through training and results and activities, ideas, improvements, CRO. Uh, and then I want to have a town hall every quarter, all company. How are we doing? What's going on? We got incentive checks. We've got training. We got safety all sorts of stuff. We have some fun and all those kinds of things. I want to make sure I meet with my customers a lot. So I'm thinking one or two days a week, I'm out of the office meeting customers for half a day. That's just in my schedule. Otherwise, we're stuck doing what we always do at low margins. So think about your role to build this team. All right. So uh, it's, it's an uh, hour and 20 minutes now. Um, I'm going to basically stop. Um, and I will stop with any questions you have. On page eight is the org chart discussion that you could look at. Uh, how do we build an org chart to win? And on page nine is a sample org chart. And then at the bottom of page nine, I have some questions. What positions need to be assigned? Uh, what people do you need to replace? Should I hire an assistant? What new positions do I need to add? And what should I stop doing? Okay. So those are some good ideas to, to consider and to think about. So before I close and stop for questions, um, I'm going to ask you, what can I do to help you? I have a pretty robust coaching pro program, and uh, uh, I'd like to help you. I offer coaching sessions, uh, a series of sessions, a monthly monthly session, retainer, and we do we get on the phone. And then some of you want me to come to your office, I'd love to do that. I have a special going. If you're interested in a six-month series, we got a $500 credit to forward you. If you're interested, you give me a call in the next week or so. Uh, I'm going to send out my newsletter at the end of the month, and I'll put it on there for two more weeks. But if you're interested, I'm going to have a special. It's not that I need the work. I just know there's a lot of you that want some help. And so if I can help you, you need me to come to your offices, I'm here to help. And uh, we'll lay out the whole plan, your vision, your org chart, your role, or your responsibilities, whatever I can do to help you, all right? All right. So obviously, you all know that I have some templates available. You just go on our website, hardhatbizcoach.com, and you can pick up all of our templates.